Hi, I'm Marco Fisser, and this is the story of my recent publication in the Journal of Ecology. During the Second World War, bomber crews suffered appallingly high losses, and this is why Bomber Command decided to conduct the census. They would tally where returning aircraft were taking the most damage, and then armor only those sections that needed the armor the most. These were the parts that took the most damage. As it happens, they asked mathematician Abraham Wall to check their calculations, on which parts required the armor. Wald, however, recommended the exact opposite of what the military planned. He made the counterintuitive recommendation that the planes needed armor in the parts that had the least damage. This is because Wald realized that these bombers were only returning because they were not hit in a critical area, such as the cockpit. Indeed, as down planes are unobservable, Wald correctly realized that the observable sample of returning bombers were biased by survival. He correctly realized the observable sample was biased by survival. Now hold that thought, because our recent paper in the Journal of Ecology isn't about bombers. It's about lianas. Lianas are the iconic tropical species. They are structural parasites of trees that start life at the forest floor and then do not invest in structural support relying instead on trees as hosts to grow towards the full light of the canopy. Once in the canopy, they eventually usurp light resources from their hosts, and this has a negative impact on tree growth, survival, and reproduction. The world is also changing, and tropical forests are no exception. Over the past decades, many studies have documented increasing abundances of lianas across the tropical latitudes of South America. The proportion of liana fruits and seeds in seed trap counts and the mean proportion of trees carrying lianas have all increased. On average, lianas have increased 21% per decade. We are not sure why this is happening, but it does beg the question of how these increasing liana abundances will affect tropical tree communities. Whether lianas will be able to influence tropical tree communities hinges on two conditions. The first is that lianas must be capable of influencing tree population growth rates. That is, the integrated effect of lianas on tree reproduction, growth and survival must significantly impact tree species population growth rates. The second condition is that lianas affect some tree species more than others. That is, we could expect lianas to change the composition of communities if some species of trees are more severely affected by lianas than others. We set out to answer these questions by examining liana tree interactions on Barro Colorado Island in Panama. On this island, scientists have been following the fate of tree species for over three decades in a plot with an area of about 50 hectares. The data collected here enabled us to integrate data from all life stages of tropical tree species. I'll start by giving you a quick overview of the data. Seed production has been tallied in weekly in 200 seed traps from 1987 onwards. The fate of seedlings has been followed in over 20,000 seedling pots since the mid-90s. And all tree stems larger than 1 cm diameter breast height, which is roughly the size of an adult pinky finger, has been mapped and followed every five years since 1980. We also recorded the reproductive status and the presence of lianas in tree crowns for roughly 20,000 individuals measured between 1996 to 2014. For the lianas, we scored the proportion of each tree crown covered by lianas on a five-point scale, which corresponds to the severity of crown infestation, as shown here by the different colors. Each score corresponds to between 0 and 100% of the crown covered by lianas. Using the data I just described, we looked at the effects of lianas on tree growth, survival, and reproduction. We did this for about 120 species. To do so, we used hierarchical models, which means we fit models that describe the community average trends and model trends for individual species simultaneously. We will first focus on the average effects for the community, or the average trends 
over all 120 species considered here. This graph shows the trends predicted from our FIT model. On the graph, we see the fraction of trees reproductive on the y-axis plotted as a function of tree size on the x-axis. The model shows us that the fraction of trees that are reproductive tend to increase with size, but that this increase is slower for trees that are severely infested by lianas. Look at the red and black lines, which represent trees with more than 50% of their crown covered by lianas. Trees with less than 50% of the crown infested, the orange, yellow, and green lines, suffer less, and are in fact statistically similar to trees without lianas. When we look at tree growth rates as a function of size, here represented by the basal growth area growth over a 10-year period, we see a similar trend, especially trees that are severely infested with more than 50% of their crown covered by lianas, seem to show the greatest drops in growth rates. Finally, we can look at survival, and we see the same pattern. Especially trees with more than 50% of their crown covered by lianas seem to show the greatest declines in survival. In summary, with the BCI data, we can show that trees tend to experience negative effects of lianas, especially when more than 50% of their crowns are covered by lianas. However, these three rates each represent something fundamentally different, and each have completely different units. So what is the net effect of lianas on trees? How can we integrate these three different rates into a single and appropriate metric? As we expect that all three rates influence population growth, the answer is to integrate them by calculating a population growth rate. One method developed to integrate these rates as growth, survival, and reproduction for organisms that vary continuously in size is to use so-called integral projection models, or IPMs. IPMs are projection kernels which predict the probability of observing a tree a certain size at time t plus 1 given the size the tree was at time t. And this probability can be calculated from growth and survival regression models. When we add the production of new individuals by trees of a certain size to this, we complete the life cycle and we are able to calculate population growth rates. And this is exactly what we did. In the next graph, in each row, we see the distributions of estimated population growth rates from the IPMs for trees that have different proportions of their crown infested. These distributions are calculated by sampling from the posterior distribution of each regression model that builds the IPM, and then recalculating population growth rates. The black dots give the species means, and the gray bars give the mean and the 99% confidence intervals for the community. A population growth rate above zero represents an increasing population, and those below zero represent declining populations. The green distribution in the background of the yellow to black distributions is the top green distribution, or the liana-free distribution, repeated so it is easier to see the difference. From these, we can conclude again that especially trees with more than 50% of their crown infested are significantly impacted, here having lower population growth rates. These results indicate that lianas indeed have the capacity to alter tree populations. However, do the effects differ among species? Before we answer this question, let's see what we can expect from the literature. A large number of studies have shown that shade-tolerant tree species, or those species that can survive in deep shade, tend to have much larger proportions of individuals infested by lianas. Light-demanding species, on the other hand, typically seldomly carry lianas in their crowns. This observation has led to the general expectation that especially shade-tolerant tree species should suffer more from liana infestation, as they have large portions of their population infested. To test this expectation, we compare the net effects of lianas on tree population growth rates to metrics of shade tolerance. 
As a measure of shade tolerance, we used each species position on the slow fast axis. This is an axis that represents slow growing shade tolerant tree species with dense wood at one end and fast growing light demanding species with lighter wood on the other end. We took these slow fast axis scores from published sources for BCI tree species. In the next slides, therefore, let's compare the population growth rates of liana free trees with severely infested trees at different levels of shade tolerance. When we plot the population growth rates of these tree species on the y-axis against their position on the slow fast axis, we see no significant trend for the tree populations that are liana free. There is no evidence that shade tolerant or light demanding species differ in their population growth rates when liana free. The population growth rates for each species when 75% or more of their crown is covered by lianas shows a different trend. Here we see a significant drop in the population growth across our axis of shade tolerance. Light demanding, fast growing species appear more severely affected. Now, when we take the difference of the severely infested and liana free population growth rates, we get a measure of how sensitive each species is to infestation by lianas. Here we see large differences between species. With species on the extreme shade tolerant end of the spectrum, hardly sensitive to liana infestation. While trees at the other end are highly sensitive to infestation by lianas. These species tend to decline rapidly when infested. As we show in the supporting material of our paper, this result holds for each of the infestation classes we looked at. How does this compare to the expectations and observations from the literature? It certainly appears that our result goes completely against the literature observations. Where we expected shade tolerant tree species to be more severely impacted, as a greater proportion of their population is always infested. However, doesn't this remind us of the bombers? Could it be that light demanding species are almost never observed to carry lianas because those that do rapidly exit the population? Therefore, if light demanding species die far more rapidly, isn't the observable sample biased by survival exactly like Abraham Wald's bombers? Let's find out if this is plausible. To test if a difference in survival rates when infested by itself can generate the observed pattern from the literature, we built a simple susceptible infected model, which is used, for instance, in disease ecology. Here, trees are colonized by lianas and also lose lianas at fixed rates. So in the model, the rates of colonization and recovery are fixed and can't produce trends among species. Trees only differ in their liana-free and infested survival rates. We then use the model to calculate the expected proportion of trees with lianas we can observe in the field. The R code to do this is given in the supporting information of our paper. As you can see, the model predicts exactly the trend that is observed in the field. The proportion of infested individuals should indeed be lower for light demanding species than shade tolerant species, simply because of differences in survival. To wrap up, in our recent journal ecology paper, we show that lianas have the capacity to alter tree populations. And as the effects differ among species, there is also a potential to affect tree communities. We can't yet predict whether increasing lianas abundances will favor shade tolerant species that tolerate lianas or light demanding species that suffer more. This is because there are many additional effects that we need to study first. For instance, our results show that lianas increase tree mortality regardless of species identity, and hence they may cause a greater rate of cap creation. Gap creation, in turn, will affect light demanding species in a positive manner. So this certainly isn't the end of the story of how trees and lianas interact. However, 
With this video, I hope at least to have shown you what lianas and bombers have in common. Dead trees, like downed bombers, are unobservable.